Greetings, kindred. Welcome to episode 11. As I am recording this, it is early Sunday morning, which is my favorite uh, day of the week and favorite time of the day. The birds are chirping. Um, It's beautiful weather here in Cleveland, Ohio, so um, I'm quite enjoying this. So we are on our third reading of The Awakened Woman, and I'm excited to be reading this particular excerpt out of chapter four. So I just want to say a couple of words regarding this particular reading. Currently, I'm going through a teacher training and our first uh, gathering was on um, yesterday. And one of the teachers said this. Um, she simply said, allow the practice to be the teacher. And then the other teacher was talking about this word of tending that kept coming up um, in terms of what she would hope would come out of the teacher training. And I thought about that as it relates to the Rooted Reading series and the whole idea of the spoken word and the idea of storytelling. And just simply want to say this, allow the practice of storytelling to be the teacher. Oral tradition um, is a part of the fabric of so many cultures, but particularly within the African culture, as well as the Black experience here in the United States. And not trying to take away from any cultures, but that is the perspective of which I come from. And so this idea of telling our story is so, so important. And as we go through these different times, it's important that we capture um, our stories now more than ever to be able to pass this down. One, to be able to remember. It's important to remember. Um, And in remembering the sense of encouragement, but also a sense of discernment and um, direction in terms of providing us wisdom as to how we move forward. Third, the idea of passing it down to the next generation. Um, It's so, so important. And this idea of tending to ourselves through our words, through our stories. So this particular chapter, chapter four, talks about that. And it's actually entitled, Be Your Own Storyteller, Creating New Pathways. And again, just reading certain portions out of the chapter. But um, I hope that this is a sense of encouragement to you. I invite you to go to the website, www.rootedblossoms.com, and um, download the free contemplative guides that I've posted. You can access these through uh, selecting resources and going to RB Digital. They're there for you. And they are free and no charge, but these are just simple guides to help you um, begin to uh, capture um, what you may be feeling or to possibly prompt or jar you to start thinking in um, a contemplative way as it relates to storytelling. Also, I wanted to let you know and wanted to extend an invitation to you um, for my virtual Root and Meditate gathering on May 24th, 12 o'clock noon, Eastern Standard Time. Definitely go to the website and check that out. And as always, Rooted Blossoms appreciates your support and would love for you to share this information, the content being shared on this podcast as well as on the website to others. And just very, very appreciative of your support. So with that being said, let's get to reading. Chapter four, be your own storyteller, 
creating new pathways. Creativity and creation. The world would have told a very different version of my grandmother's story if she had not told it to us herself. To outsiders and foreigners who did not understand her way of life and her deep hunger, she was often seen as little more than a poor, illiterate woman, an uninformed bush healer, victim of a patriarchal social system. This is not the whole truth about my grandmother. It is a partial truth. If the story of her life continued to be told that way, her oppression would dominate and overshadow her power. My grandmother was a heroine to her community. She was not just a victim of a patriarchal and colonial environment. She was also a woman who thrived, a respected woman who transcended her circumstances, a wise woman full of grace and dignity. Like my grandmother, we do have the power to tell alternate stories, to tell authentic stories, to tell complex and messy stories, and to tell our own stories. Sacred Sisters, This is about taking responsibility for who we are, engaging our minds and hearts in creativity and storytelling that builds the very core of ourselves to our fullest potential, and to speak our future selves, the once painful aspects from which we've healed. Unlike the usual linear way we set our life goals, school, then career, then marriage, then children, as just one example, storytelling enables us to be imaginative and inspirational in our goals. It allows for revisions and make-believe, for unhindered creativity, and mystery. When told in supportive outlets, such as with friends and mentors, or through blogging or writing, it allows others to revisit their own stories, to creatively craft a new self. Like our buried dreams, stories are little seeds we plant Who knows what will heal or grow once they begin to germinate? I once spoke with a woman named Anna who shared with me how storytelling helped her through a difficult time in her life. In her late 30s, Anna suddenly realized that she was actually a terrible fit for the profession she had spent so much time and energy seeking. She was unhappy, unfulfilled, and stuck. This young woman had spent many years training to be a psychologist. It had been her life's goal since she was very young, and so right from college, Anna went to graduate school, working very hard to be academically successful, taking on loans to make this goal possible, and even sacrificing her personal life for her studies. Yet she was confident and comforted in the knowledge that she was pursuing her dreams. Anna celebrated a joyful graduation day, but a few years later she knew by the terrible feeling in her chest that she was burned out, miserable, and that she needed a professional rebirth. A good amount of shame and fear accompanied this feeling. She had school debt. She had no idea where to go next. She was supposed to be responsible and settled by now. 
She had wasted so much time. She had been so confident that she was on the right path. How could she trust her intuition again? Anna didn't realize it at the time, she told me, but it was storytelling that helped her begin to move from a wilted old dream into the budding seed of another. I was feverishly imagining other ways my life might look. I told people I love to bake. I'm going to open a bakery. I'd announced on social media that I was thinking about opening a daycare with all of the most recent child psychology research in mind. When strangers would ask what I was, I do for a living, I'd try out my newest idea. I'm applying for jobs at nonprofit domestic violence shelters. I'm going to do a yoga teacher training. I'm a writer. Anna confided in me that she often felt embarrassed that she had told people she was going to do something that never came to fruition. More often, however, the story she told about her future helped her imagine herself beyond the pain and the fear she felt at making this change. If Anna could imagine her life differently, she said, then she could live her life differently, too. I had to inhabit a new life a little bit first. It was like trying on new clothes to see myself in that way. Like when I was little playing dress up. And that's how she worked her way out of a dark and confusing time of personal upheaval through imagination and play. One of those alternate dream paths became her new reality. Playing and imagination are both central to storytelling. I'm not talking about free writing as a form of therapy where you just pour everything out onto paper in a stream of consciousness. Although that can be great too. I'm talking about stories as an act of creativity and creation. I'm talking about a mixture of knowing and mystery. As author and activist Parker J. Palmer writes, the facts can never be understood except in communion with the imagination. Don't feel limited by your current reality. If we are to get in touch with our sacred purpose, then we must be willing to dive into the not yet and dance around for a while in the endless possibilities open to us. You've written your dreams down and rooted yourself to the earth. Now air them out a little. Stretch the boundaries. Through language, we can rewrite our stories. We can tell our stories with ourselves as the protagonist. And we can tell the truth. Otherwise, someone else is measuring our lives. Don't be fooled by the idea of your life as one linear timeline from birth to death as if a neat, orderly narrative is the organizing structure of your existence. The power to craft and create through your creativity and non-linear imagination, this is your birthright. It has been passed down to you from generations of storytellers back to the origins of humanity. It will probably be messy, all great works of art require rough drafts. You might feel you are too old to engage in such seemingly frivolous creative pursuits. Only children get to play dress up, you might think. Or only children get to play make-believe. But I'm here to tell you through imagination and play, 
you are creating a great work of art. It's an ongoing project of revision and reimagining that has no clear beginning or end. It is a project worth doing at any age. I once attended a book club discussion at Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic, led by a woman who began the meeting by asking everyone to introduce themselves with their names and their favorite creative pursuit. One woman responded, My name is Tracy, and I'm a singer. Another one said, I'm Noel, and I'm a writer. And so I met a singer and a writer. As the discussion proceeded, however, we learned that these women were not writers or singers, at least not yet. These were their dreams for themselves. They wanted to sing and write, and they had recently begun to do it in their spare time. We in the group did not judge. We met these women as they were on a journey toward a new yet original self. Poet and psychoanalyst Clarissa Pincola Estes celebrates the power of working with stories so that they don't just define us, but that they speak back to them and make something from them. I hope you will go out and let stories that is life happen to you, Este writes, and that you will work with these stories. Water them with your blood, tears, and your laughter till they bloom, to, till you yourself burst into bloom. My soul sings stories in this way. This is the creative potential of storytelling, a full-bodied experience, like kneading dough or dancing in the rain, in which we give birth to new versions of ourselves. Story as Medicine the power of storytelling is indeed full body. It not only nurtures our souls, it also heals the body. Many health professionals proclaim the health benefits of telling and listening to stories. Telling your story while being witnessed with loving attention by others who care may be the most powerful medicine on earth says doctor and best-selling author Lisa Rankin. Each of us is a constantly unfolding narrative, she continues. A hero in a novel no one else can write. And yet so many of us leave our stories untold, our songs unsung. And when this happens... We wind up feeling lonely, listless, out of touch with our life's purpose, plagued with a chronic sense of something is out of alignment. We may even wind up feeling unworthy, unloved, or sick. Storytelling can be a mighty slab for our bodies, minds, and spirits, if we are brave enough to dive into creativity and voice, we can heal. Telling our stories is another antidote to the chronic misalignment or sickness that we experience in a world full of silences. When we feel those silences with our voices and speak our fullness, we heal body and soul. Our lives are measured by the stories we tell. We need to be witnessed and embraced, not through our silences, 
but through making ourselves heard. When this happens, the soul sings and the body flows in harmony, free from strain and defensiveness. Storytelling then is a powerful source of lived evidence. There's your GPA. There's your annual income. There's your height and weight. But that's not who you are. In fact, you can't really quantify the fullness of who you are. That's where telling stories comes in. The medical field is increasingly becoming aware of the healing power of storytelling on the body and on a relationship between the teller and witness. Storytelling is good for your health because as social beings, we need to make meaning of our lives through narrative. We need to be heard. And to do so in a culture that often prefers our silences means being bold enough to speak our stories and vulnerable enough to ask others to witness them. This is a pathway to wholeness and healing. Speak the self. Heal nations. Our stories have magic. They give shape and purpose to communities and even nations. Storytelling has depth that brings collective empathy Reminding us of the essence of our humanity, the Ubuntu, the humanness that makes us human beings. When I heard my grandmother tell of her pain as well as her expertise, she showed me that a woman can be vulnerable and strong. I saw her humor and her sadness her frustration at the cultural limits for women and her longing for something more. Feelings that were both personal and cultural. I intuitively understood myself as capable of asking those same questions and seeking to fill in the blanks her story created. When a mother in the U.S. hears in a Syrian mother's own voice, how she carried her two-year-old on her back, drugged so he would not cry, and alert the heavily armed border control across hundreds of miles in the damp and rain to a refugee camp. The distance between these women collapses, as do geographical, political, and cultural borders that may divide them. Our stories have power because through them, we embrace our collective vulnerability and worthiness. When you share your pain and resilience, and I share mine, We become one. We might say that the world oppresses women by silencing our voice, but the inverse is also true. The world suffers, in many cases without knowing or acknowledging it, without women's voices. Sacred sisters, this is the power we have to tell stories that deepen and extend human consciousness, that heal our souls, and that can bring a global spiritual and physical healing. When we tell our stories, when we embrace creativity and imagination to not only tell ourselves as we really are, but also to imagine ourselves beyond our current realities, that act echoes beyond the self in powerful ways. Our stories need to be told. 
and there is richness in our diversity because we are not monolithic. Rather, it is the beauty of our differences that will bring a cross-pollination of great lessons to be learned that will strengthen not just ourselves, but also the world around us. Let us not forget that we have the power in our hands to tell our stories, stories that heal not only our sisterhood, but nations as well. Thank you again for supporting and listening to the podcast. I am so pleased to announce that the podcast is now available on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube. Consider leaving a rating or review. Also, please consider sharing the podcast with others that may like or benefit from the content being shared. Both would be appreciated and help in growing the podcast. Should you want to connect, email me at rootedblossoms at gmail.com or visit my website at www.rootedblossoms.com. This and more information about today's episode and Rooted Blossoms can be found in the show notes. This podcast could not happen without you, the listeners, as well as the work and support of Gwendolyn Wren, cover design, James Derrick, audio content editing, Donald Goins and Nicholas Graham Sound. Until we connect again, remember to make time for soulful communion and healing connection of breath, body, and spirit.